Hey everybody, welcome to Board Game Heaven. My name's Raymond, and in this video I'll be doing an unboxing of this enormous Sator box for Black Rose Wars by Ludus Magnus Studios. This was basically the Kickstarter exclusive stretch goal box that uh, people got for backing the Kickstarter, and it's absolutely massive. It's super heavy. There's a lot of stuff in here, so let's quickly crack it open. Okay, the Sator box. This is the box with all the stretch goals for Black Rose Wars, and it is huge. It was supposed to be, you know, a square box like this, and they just couldn't fit everything in. And so they made this enormous cardboard box, and they added a sleeve to it, which is smaller than the cardboard box. And it's just gigantic. This is crazy, insanely big. The amount of stretch goals that this game had was crazy. And it has the Sator Square on it, which is pretty cool. And you can look that up. I just looked it up and it's um, Latin for something along the lines of the, literally the cedar or the, um, the sower, the, the farmer, a repo, which either is a name or could possibly also mean a plot of land, an acre or something. Uh, so the farmer on his land, tenant, has, holds or keeps uh, opera, which is work or labor. So keeps through labor, rotas, which is wheels. So could translate into something like, you know, through labor, the farmer on his land keeps the wheels going or keeps his his crops growing or something along those lines. It's pretty cool. I had never seen that uh, before, so I looked it up and that was pretty interesting. So we got this and I also got a couple of extra things, cards. So an extra room here. Uh, I don't know why this isn't in the box uh, per se. I, I forgot. But we get an extra room that looks like something that could belong to the Inferno expansion, another Ring of Hell, Circle of Hell. A nice foil special card here, look at that, shiny. The Black Limp card. It's just the one card and we have cards for all of the mages. Um, so yeah, we have a pack of those. I'll have to find out what those are for. So since this is all shrink wrapped and there is no way and it's just a cardboard box anyway. I'll just rip off the shrink. Which is also nice to do once in a while. <laughs> if you've seen other unboxings on my channel, you know that I usually keep the shrink on the boxes. But uh, in this case, I'll just take it all off and I'll just see if I can slide this off carefully. There you go. that out so we can take a look at the back without flipping over that entire heavy box so everything that's in here there's 73 new miniatures that's a lot of miniatures that's a whopping bucket load of miniatures we got the solo mode expansion which is pretty cool uh, we've got 17 new unlocked mages awesome we've got 30 new rooms we got 27 new evocations, 11 new schools of magic, which is also quite a lot of, you know, 300, almost 400 spells. Well, even with these forgotten spells, over 400. There's a campaign mode, which I was very excited about. It's pretty cool. And a mages expansion. I mean, wow, 24 mages. Crazy, crazy the amount of stuff that's in here. So really cool. Thank you, Ludus Magnus Studio, for all those stretch goals. And here is the Seder box. So let me just see. I assume it opens here. Yes, it does. Oh my lord, this is the biggest cardboard box I've ever had from a Kickstarter. <laughs> all right, so let's see here. There's so much stuff. So we have these boards, and I guess these are used for some of those game modes. Uh, this is completely shrink wrapped. I'll open that up. 
All right, you know what? I'll take a look at the um, rule book so I can tell you something about the stuff we find in here because there's a lot. Wow, there's mm -hmm. just a lot. New schools of magic, new mechanisms. Cool. Trickery, Omnia, Blood, Bardic, Elementalism, Cartomancy, Mind Magic, Enchantments, Demonology, the Void Magic, Chronomancy. So, the components, here we go. So we have Activation Tokens, you've got the Solo Play Quest Cards, this is all for Solo Play. Evocation tokens. And of course, how you set up uh, your solo game. New rooms. So these are new mage sheets and mage cards. So that's these. Yeah, okay, all right. We'll see. And you can use those cards. So th that's these then, I assume, which weren't in the box actually. But they're part of this. Okay. This is so cool. Look at that art. It's amazing. Campaign mode. It's also pretty cool. In several parts of the land here. The Assassin's Creed guy. Ezio Auditore. It's actually officially <laughs> Assassin's Creed. That's pretty cool. Assassin's Brotherhood. Look with the logo and everything. Super cool crossover there. Amsterdam. Cool. There we go. <laughs> nice. And here's a campaign sheet. All right. Sweet. Okay, so we have this green board. So you put your mage card in here and you can have spells there and evocations and there's slots for everything for the cubes there. Nice has the same art on the back. Same thing in red for, you know, every player can have a color in yellow, in blue and in gray, black. And another one on red, was that a different color? Am I being colorblind here? Well, this is more, okay, purple, pinkish, and this is red. All right, we have some sheets of tokens. So uh, a dial here, and we have some tokens there. Tokens, which looks pretty nice. We got some dolly elephants there, <laughs> the elephants on these mosquito legs. We got these mage tokens in the different player colors, which is nice. Oh yeah, okay, so these didn't come with the core game and you can use them. They were basically, yeah, they were a stretch goal as well. That's pretty cool in all the player colors. So even if you have the Hidden Thorns expansion with these two colors, with the white and the purple, there's boards for those as well. And these sheets are both uh, double-sided, of course. And this is another sheet with all these room tiles, tokens, and some other stuff going on here, these evocation tokens. So yeah, we have those. Here's another mage, I guess, old Jukus. For, oh yeah, he's from Nova Aetas. So this is a crossover card. They had quite a few. So, okay, so this did come in here. So I wonder why I got a second pack. So that either means these have uh, errors on them, that they needed to be corrected, or maybe just some of them, because I'm not seeing any differences here. Uh, I'll keep these apart, just to be sure, and put these on the right. Um, yeah, so if every, anyone knows, I'll, I'll look it up, of course, but feel free to comment. Oh, wow, we also get a card for Cine Tempore to play Old Jukas in that game, if you have that game. I don't, but uh, it's a bit bent, so I'll, I'll need to put that underneath something heavy. And with the sheet to accompany that as well for Cine Tempore. 
And then we have a whole bunch of figures. Oh my lord. This is this is crazy. This is insane. I'll put this on the side to keep the best for last, the big ones. <laughs> so let's start with uh, with this tray right here. This is amazing. And these have little clips on the sides, so that's good. They keep everything in place and they're not taped. Okay, so what do we have here? Um, do we have all of these creatures explained somewhere? I don't know. Let me just have a quick look. That would be nice. I don't think so, because it doesn't have... Or does it miniatures? No, not really. That's a shame. I could have looked up their names, but we shall see. All right. Oh yeah, I remember we got a uh, a crown, 3D crown token. Look at that. That is amazing. Sweet. It's like first player marker or something, but that is amazing. It's really cool. Uh, let's see what else do we have. Did, did this go in oh, like that? These are the uh, little uh, clips for the spin dials. We have the broom here because we had one um, kind of like uh, uh, Fantasia um, Easter egg with a sort of Mickey Mouse kind of demon. And Mickey Mouse in the Fantasia movie is the apprentice wizard who turns all of these, turns a broom into a helper and then multiplies and goes awry. And this is uh, a wink to that movie, that amazing movie. <laughs> so we have that one. We have these monsters here, which had the cool artwork in the uh, booklet. So there you go, pretty nice. Okay, look at the detail on that one, the ribs underneath the belly there, really cool. The little claws, and these, I don't know, kind of like tentacles with fingers on the back. And again, the base is nicely sculpted, standing on some rocks with these peg holes. Really cool. That's a pretty nice miniature. And we have three of those in here. Next, we have these big demons with the long noses. That's really funny. Look at that big nose. And they are feathered. They have these talons, these claw, clawed feet. And he's uh, holding these feathers, presumably some kind of weapon and they have some weapons on their belts, cool looking armor and wings. Plenty of detail here made from a very hard kind of plastic, which I like. This looks like a very, very highly detailed hard kind of plastic. It's almost like resin, but it's not. It doesn't feel as fragile as resin. So this is a really nice material. I like, like this. Well done. So we have two of those guys. Then we have this, which looks like an earth elemental. Reminds me of the mountain in uh, Neverending Story. <laughs> the, the big rock eater. And uh, it's got these kind of like tribal, almost Aztec looking uh, designs. Really nice, all the rocks, it's pretty cool. So we have two of those. Let's see here. This is a cat. <laughs> I forgot his name. But there was a, a cat with a wizard's hat sitting on some books. Also a very nicely detailed base. I like the, the thickness of these bases, nice and thick bases with all the cobblestones and the roses. 
does mean that if you're painting these, there are going to be some work <laughs> to paint all those roses and those, those vines. But it's going to look amazing. So yeah, the cat. Then we've got two of these uh, feline looking, I don't know, pumas, panthers, something. Again, with these uh, kind of tribal designs on them, these Aztec looking, uh, I don't know, metal plates, sort of like armor. And it looks like they have flaming manes. So kind of like a Hellcat. Pretty cool. So two of those in here. Then we have these uh, dancing blades. Two blades that are animated. Uh, just flying around on, with these chains on them. Also very nice. Nice deep detail in those uh, blades there. And of course, again, the sculpted base. So three of those. Let's see what this is. This, oh yeah, this was the little pixie. <laughs> really cool. This is a cute little fairy or pixie, whatever it is, with a holding a rose, which was a nice little extra, a nice little unlocked stretch goal. Kind of like a thank you. I mean, the entire box is a huge thank you for the Kickstarter backers. But yeah, that's, that's just a lot of fun seeing those. We have now three of these. Uh, these ladies, these courtesan looking uh, ladies with these nice uh, Baroque-ish dresses. Uh, like a masked ball, a Venetian ball or something with the feathers and the fan and all the different layers of dress and it looks just look really, really cool. Lots of detail there on the, on the clothing, on the shawl there. Look at all the little details here on the ridges. It's pretty nice. Here on the, on the dress as well, all around. A lot of attention went into the detail of these. Really cool. Three of those. Here's the the Mickey Mouse demon. <laughs> it's basically a, some kind of a demon wearing a hat that has these ears on it. So that's here. Here's the broom. <laughs> so that's the kind of like Fantasia Easter egg nod to the movie. I like that a lot. <laughs> Evil little imp there. Cool. So we have that guy. Then we have this um, sorceress or witch with the big witch-like hat or Gandalf hat or what, what have you with her staff there. Nice. Again, very detailed. And then we got this bard here, looks like. So, uh, holding his loot, pointing, pointing up <laughs> to the crowd, I think. Lots of detail again in the belt and the clothing. There's a dagger there. Really cool. Love the detail on this. Right, next. So these lighter ones are all the um, mages you can play, the extra player characters. And the gray ones are the monsters. So this one is holding a tome with a face in it, a little skull there. I don't know if you can see that over there. Pretty nice. Holding this dagger. Very muscular. And he's got like either a flaming head or like a bag over his head. I'm not sure. It's pretty cool though. And a, uh, uh, what's that called? A rudder, a steering wheel for the, 
for boats on the back with some rope standing on this big rock. Yeah, so not sure what that is on his head. All right, let's put that guy back. Here we have another female mage with a staff, a long braided hair. And these are pretty tall uh, in comparison to other miniatures I have. So they're slightly bigger, I think, than your average miniature, but they're pretty cool. They're really, really detailed. Really like that. Here's another one. This looks like, you know, like Merlin. Come on, focus. There we go. With that silver skull cap, with a staff. He's got an hourglass with some kind of magical effect coming from it. Lots of scrolls hanging from his belt, more hourglasses there. That's pretty cool. And this again, look at the detail in this, in this clothing. Really, really nice. And really Black Rose Wars, Ludus Magna Studios are some of the best detailed miniatures I have seen. And I've seen quite a lot of miniatures. But these are amazing. Here's another uh, wizard, kind of like, kind of like, looks like a shaman of sorts. Also really cool, this, uh, what is that? This cloak made out of fur, it seems. And this staff with that petal on the end. Interesting. Yep. All right, so who do we have here? Uh, this looks like, oh yeah, that's uh, probably this guy, Eliumbra. <laughs> Recognize the hood. He's got some really long, creepy fingernails or fingers. There's a screaming head on his belt. <laughs> That's really cool. There's a nice hat with these two jingly bells at the end. <laughs> Pretty nice. So yeah, the detail on this it's absolutely stunning. So, another wizard uh, holding a staff with a wing, with a bird. There's an entire bird on here that's <laughs> holding its wing out. That's pretty nice. <laughs> Again, with the detail here on the on the hood and on the clothing here. I mean, look at that. It's sweet. Holding a tome with a rose on it, if you can see that. Cool. Billowing cloak. Really nice. Next one. And this is just the first tray. <laughs> cool. This is a, an invisible mage. As you can see there, there's the boot. And there's another boot up here. He's got one boot on the staff. That's very cleverly done because here is the the um, glove and the arm is invisible. There's nothing there. So in order to keep the staff, you know, solidly connected, they put his boot on there. It's so clever. And then the knee here is, is invisible, of course, there. That's so cleverly done. Here is the other arm. That's amazing. That's, that's just one of the most clever designs I've ever seen. An invisible mage. You can only see the clothing. <laughs> Look at the faces in the cloak there. Sweet. This is really, really good. <laughs> this is also pretty funny. This, this mage with his head completely 
in the hat, it seems. <laughs> what does that remind me of? It reminds me of something, some RPG. I mean, there's a lot of Easter eggs here, a lot of winks and nods to other popular culture things like video games or movies. And this is from something. Again, if you know, comment below. I, I love to read all about that. Look at the detail on the clothes. Yeah, things on his belt. Nice. Right, so... Another mage. This uh, woman has three pairs of arms. So there, there, and there. Incredible. It's pretty cool. The billowing hair. So, you know, like she's she's walking in water, but on land. Can you imagine, you know, this person walking towards you and hair and clothes are like fluttering as if you were underwater. It looks really cool. Nice effect. And here is the Cine Tempore crossover guy with some nice semi techy looking uh, items and an armor. They kind of made it to look, you know, uh, like it fits in this theme. It's more high fantasy, medieval kind of setting. But it does look like that's some high-tech armor, so it's some kind of tinkerer. Pretty cool. All right. I think that was everything in the first tray. I don't think I missed anything here. So I'll close that up again. Put that on the side. There we go. And here is the second train. There's even a third train. It's insane. And these are some big guys over here. Wow. Oh boy. All right. Whew. Wow. So let's see. We have two of these demon like warriors. They have horns, plenty of detail on the muscles. There's some heads on the belt. Wow. Look kind of looks looks like an oni, if I'm not mistaken. That symbol on the belt there and this huge weapon. So that looks really cool and definitely has a you know ancient Japanese mythical vibe to it. So that looks really nice. Look at all that detail. And again, this is pretty sturdy. I can move this a little, but uh, that's really, really hard plastic. So we get two of those. Then we get two of these. And this looks like some kind of giant or demon from, again, from Aztec. Uh, myths, legends, it definitely has that vibe. Super cool. So they mixed in all kinds of, you know, culture, all kinds of uh, historical, legendary monsters. And that's really cool. So we have two of those. <laughs> Look at this guy. Wow. Look how big that is. That's insane. Huge giant. I've got a cat here wanting attention. Yes, hello. <laughs> so the big belt there with all that detail on it. Wow. Look at that. The big head with the, the tusks there in the corner of the mouth. And these big shoulder uh, shoulder armor hooves. It's amazing. And they're just about to toss a half a ruin at you. 
<laughs> just a chunk of tower. So yeah, if you want to redecorate, <laughs> call these guys. But it's just amazing. So big. Really, really cool. Two of these, no less. Boom. Then we have three of these kind of like clockwork golems. <laughs> this is awesome with the the barrels and the pieces of metal clock. Kind of like a thrown together golem. Super cool. All the detail here. Nice, look at that. That's really lovely. Oh, we got three of those in here. Here are some more golems, I guess. So this looks like a mix between a rock or crystal golem and a uh, bone golem. That looks pretty cool. It has like rock and crystals everywhere, jutting out some horns, uh, some ribs. There's a skull there, another one. There's a lot of stuff to discover in this one. It's really cool. There's like a sword sticking in, it seems. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting sculpt. Really nice. I love the imagination of these sculptors, you know, and the artists. It's crazy. So we get two of those. Then we have two of these. And that looks like Kitsune uh, kind of creature. So a female fox person with all of these tails, five tails, it seems. And a jewel wielding these swords. That's really cool. A small face. That is a lovely sculpt. All the daggers on the on the legs, on, the, on these little straps. And all the detail in the shin protectors there. Wow. This is some high quality plastic people. Nice, look at that, look at all the detail. Whew. Yep, I have to say I am thoroughly impressed by the quality of, of all of these. And then we get four more of these player characters. <laughs> look at this guy. <laughs> wow. Who looks like some kind of Norse mythical god. He kind of looks dwarven, but he's way too big. He's like a giant. Look at that. Look at the hair and all the, the carvings in this Warhammer and that, that axe. Sweet. All the detail here. Wow. The flaming hammer. Detail in this belly armor. <laughs> it's quite an impressive belly there. And the braided beard. Look at all that. Look, here it is a tome and some, some um, smithing tools. So cool. That is just and a sword there. Really, really, really impressive. This is a super cool figure. <laughs> Honestly, this is wow. Here is Baba Yaga with her um, chicken leg hut. Well, this one only has one chicken leg. I've seen huts with hundreds of chicken legs, or which is two chicken legs or four. It's different every time. And it's a pretty small hut to live in, I would say, but <laughs> it's funny. There's, a, there's Baba Yaga's hut with the chicken legs and Baba Yaga sitting on it. This is a decidedly a younger version of Baba Yaga than I usually see. But that's pretty cool. Nicely detailed face as well. You can make out the facial features, which is often difficult to pick out. So yeah, that's just super cool. Here is another one. Oh, this is also so nice. 
on one of those well you know it looks like a line but i believe they are like these chinese dogs i believe that you see at restaurants you know these golden uh creatures i like that and this this one is a lot of extra detail to it you can see the fur and these manes that are curly like in the statues here that's so cool that's really cool and this warrior sitting on top although yeah he, he's got some booze there it seems and he also has a little bit of a belly <laughs> drunken master perhaps who knows i don't know holding this staff Again, something that's definitely from, you know, some Eastern legend. Super cool. That is, that's simply amazing. All right, so that was in here. And then lastly, from this tray, we have another mage. Uh, who looks like he's got a skeletal face. Skeletor. <laughs> Actually, you know, this does look like Skeletor. <laughs> he's got the staff with the skull's head and the horns, and he's got the sword. Maybe this is a, 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 an Easter egg, a wink to uh, the most beloved villain ever from the 80s. <laughs> yeah. That's really nice. Yeah, I, I might if i ever get to painting this paint him blue with the yellow skulls and face and the purple clothes <laughs> sweet that was really cool all right so we have all of them and this is just wow amazing all of these all of these are amazing ah so i'm glad i backed this <laughs> just for the minis even and then the final tray and I still have to do the dragon. Whew, even more. It's just, I'm opening this box and looking at these minis. And I'm like, wow, stunned. So we have these Kappa. Koopa Troopas. <laughs> Kappa, which are with these water uh, demons. Again, from uh, Japanese myths. Really cool. The spiked tortoise shells and creepy faces look at that face that's just wow stuff of nightmares really nice so we have two of those kappa his enzio from assassin's creed really cool to have a miniature of that character as well and he's not a uh, beige, he's gray, so he's an opponent, I think. I don't know. Nice. Really nice. He's got the uh, hidden wrist blade. And he's got a sword. Nice. On a big base. Sculpted base. I also like that, you know, they've got these big chunky bases, so they're, you know, these are big figures, not just some tiny bases. This, is, this has presence, you know. Then we have these pig warriors. I'll take this one. This one has a slightly less bent axe. And again, if you have, you know, trouble with bent plastic, uh, usually the hot water method works just fine. Just boil some water, pour it in a in a cup, and then just dip in the figure. Don't get your fingers in there. Just hold it with you know at the edge of the base, or use something, some tool. It's a butt crack, <laughs> and then just soak it in there for a bit until it gets all warm and it will get softer and then you can take it out and you can bend it a little and it will usually just snap back into place it will bend back into its original uh, mold shape and then you just hold it under the cold water tap and then it will set and that's all you need to do 
So this pig centaur monster is pretty nice as well. It's cool. The axe. Yeah. So we have three of those. Then we have two, I believe, yeah, there's one there as well of these, these snake demons. Also pretty nice, look at that. Like that. Yep. So we have two of those. Also look at all the detail on the on the tail there. Nice. Okay. And then we got three of these guys. Wow. With the manes and the big demon like skull like face and big muscular legs and arms. You can see the veins running across there and muscles there. Super cool. And this lizard tail sort of like, I don't know, some kind of hybrid monster between a human and a lizard and, and a lion. I don't know. Abomination. But yeah, and this is nice and chunky. Nice and big. Strong looking mini. So we have three of these. And then we have these two ginormous dudes. Wow. Something straight out of Greek mythology, I think. Because of that pillar and the hooves. It looks like a, some kind of minotaur. The horns. Uh, yeah, with the, the big mane on the helmet. Well, this is something, you know, you'd see in, uh, in an arena fighting some gladiator and completely smashing people to bits. Look at that. Look at the pillars on chains on his wrists to swing around. That's <laughs> and I like how big and chunky all the, all the details are, all the the armor that he's wearing, the leather straps, everything has a huge depth to it. You know, there's there's a lot of, uh, well, depth in the detail, in the mold. And that just makes everything pop. This is amazing. This is really some high quality miniatures here. Very, very impressive. I mean, every single miniature I've seen in this box is just <laughs> absolutely stunning. It's absolutely amazing. And here is the the other <laughs> big demon. Again, with a bovine face and a ring through the nose, the horns, the ears, the hooves. So some kind of minotaur tail even. Did the other guy have a tail? Did I miss that? No, this one doesn't have a tail. Unless he's hidden it underneath that, but this one doesn't have a tail. This one does. <laughs> a huge armor. And this enormous, enormous sword. This is bent a bit, so this is going to get the hot water treatment. I like all the, the pointy and spiky um, armor. Look at that here. All the spikes on this neck piece and the pointy knees and the spikes on the shoulders. So cool. Yeah, this is just incredibly impressive. Nice. All right. I think that's almost all the minis. We have some more cards here, and there's a lot of cards, so I'm not gonna open all of these. That's just gonna take way too long, but uh, I usually do that. But what I am gonna do is, and I, hey, there's even spots here for, I, I'm assuming, I don't know, what, what could fit in here? Not, not these, <laughs> I don't know. There's cards here. Lots of these cards, 
these cards. There's again some cards with room effects that I assume there's um, six of those, so you can hand one to each player. And uh, wow, there's just so many cards. These, uh, what were these? Are the quest cards, I believe. Yeah, so quest cards, so you can gain extra points for doing stuff and uh, some more of all the different phases of the moon of course here's the monster cards this is an abomination <laughs> and more of those quest cards smash the king and we have these cards again is that Again, quest cards or were these event cards? Can't quite remember. More of these. Pigman! <laughs> yeah, these monster cards with the double double sided. And more of those. So yeah, we've got so many, 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 many cards in here. I'll take a look at those when I have time. Now we have these bigger cards, more of those. Whew, there's just so many. All separately packed. All right. So yeah, there's just, ooh, 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 shiny, shiny foil cards. <laughs> that completely interrupted my train of thought. But I was gonna say, you know, I'm not gonna show you all of these cards because there's just way too many. And they're mostly spells. Spells, 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 spells. Yeah. So just a really, really great many for all the different mages, of course, that we unlocked and that were in this box. So yeah. Oh, there's more minis hidden underneath. Look at that. We got nine of these awesome chests how cool is that look at that nice with the tentacles sculpted on the wood uh, all the iron bits and the chains and the rows there in the center nice nine of those wow that's i mean these minis I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really, <laughs> I'm deeply impressed by everything here. All right, so I'll show you these tiles and then I'll show you the final two minis. And then we'll have shown almost everything from this box. So this is the Cyclops Forge. Really cool. Big forge here. It's pretty clear. Anvil there. And the destroyed version of that tile. We have an alehouse. Preza for alehouses. Really cool. And a destroyed version. Spilled ale. We have a eerie machinery. There's a clock in the middle. And a destroyed room. A cursed temple. And yeah, I'm trying to see what that is. These are like angels holding something in their hands, four of them. Hmm. Cool. All right, the Garden of Ice and Fire. That's nice. Yep. And the destroyed version. The Cyclops Room. All right. And the destroyed side of that. This is the Cards Room. So cards are being read there. Fortune being told. Nice colors. Really colorful tile here and here. Everything's destroyed and the table's overturned. The pigmen's room. Hmm. They have their weapon racks with that axe that they're holding. Their trow 
and a trough with food and mud bath. <laughs> it makes sense. And a destroyed version of that room. The Orlogium. The clock numbers there and the dials. That looks really nice. And destroyed version. And as you can see, all of these tiles, just like the base game, are uh, made of two layers of cardboard. So you have these indentations where you can put cubes. It's pretty cool. Here's a theater, a nice uh, theater with the wooden props, the uh, trees and everything, the lights, the benches. That's pretty cool. And a destroyed theater. There's a couple more, three more to go. A clinging swamp. Nice with the water lilies, a little lights there, light lightning bugs. And here everything is destroyed. We have the Tana dei Troll. Why is this in Spanish? Oh, in, in Italian and the rest in English. I don't know. <laughs> but that's apparently the Troll's Lair with the Ludus Magnus Studios logo in there. That's cool. <laughs> oh, <laughs> here's the Black Rose Wars game even. So the Troll apparently likes games. He was a Cine Tempore, I believe. There's probably another game there. Can't quite make out what that is. Nope. <laughs> nice. This is, this is cool. Cool little Easter egg there. Oh, and of course, the destroyed version. There's even a Ludus Magnus logo on that thing over there. Why was it not on this side? It's interesting. Is that something that fell from the ceiling, perhaps? <laughs> And the Assassin's Creed Brotherhood room. Nice with the logo. Really cool. And a destroyed version. Right. That was quite a lot. But finally, we also have this tray that was in here. And that also has a little lid. And that has two huge minis. So we have, I think this is the Cyclops from those rooms, from the forge in the room, I think. Because he's got the one. Is that an eye? I can't even really tell. It's a big giant. Look at that thing. And he's crouched. So if he were standing up, he'd be a lot bigger. Got chains on his arms, and he's got this pauldron and this big uh, arm guard, and these these uh, bits of armor on his legs, and the big hammer with all kinds of stuff sculpted in there, chains. I mean, the detail on these. There's a lot to discover. These kind of clipped wings, and all the muscles pants. <laughs> He's got these um, shackles on his ankles. That is just amazing. Yeah, that's, this is just... These minis, they, they blow me away. It's... <laughs> I don't have words. <laughs> And then finally, the dragon. Oh, look at that thing. That just fits in the palm of my hand. This huge base, this tail. Nice, look at that head. Look at that. The teeth and the horns and the horns on his spine. He's even got some armor on his uh, shoulders. And uh, there's a screaming head there <laughs> on the breastbone there, the ribs. It's got some armor on the arms. An armored undead dragon. Look at those wings. Oh, just awesome. Yep. I mean, I could look at this for a very long time and still 
discovering new little details there in the in the skin. Sweet. Yeah, this is just amazing. I keep seeing it, but it's true. <laughs> Yes, well, I have to say Ludus Magnus Studios did an astounding job. They knocked it out of the park with these minis. This, this is fantastic. I don't even know if I'll ever have the time to even play all of the content that they added to the core game. There's just so much. It's just <laughs> incredible amount of stuff. But it's amazing really sweet so this was everything in the sator box and so that was my unboxing of the sator box for black rose wars by ludus magnus studio i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and if you hit the bell icon you'll also get notified whenever i upload a new video please also consider becoming a patreon saint to my channel by clicking the patreon link in the description below or the icon at the end of this video Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Board Game Heaven.